I'm Juliana Zeus and I'm the Research Analyst and Policy Lead for Space as part of the Military Sciences team at RUSI. So human-machine teaming or human-machine collaboration is essentially about the optimization of cognitive tasks. So that's using the strength of the machine and the strength of the human to their sort of fullest extent, which means obviously humans are much more creative, uh, we're better at sort of complex tasks, whereas machines act with more precision, with more speed, and are able to do tasks with a high repetition rate as well. So it's about playing to the strength of both. So what really differentiates this process from, for example, automation is that it changes the behavior of both. So for example, in an AI, enabled HMC process, for example, it means that decisions are informed by the actions of both. Uh, I'm Siddharth Koshal. I'm the Research Fellow for Sea Power and Missile Defense at, in the Military Sciences team at RUSI. So there's a few ways in which uh, HMC and HMT uh, will likely affect warfighting. Autonomous capabilities, particularly if, uh, if they become more effective in coming years, can allow a great deal of the ta a great uh, portion of the tasks associated with things like surveillance to be conducted at the edge of a network, potentially collaboratively between multiple different capabilities. If the miniaturization of microelectronics and increases in their processing power are expected to continue much as they have over previous decades, we can expect ever smaller platforms at the edge of a network to perform many of the tasks that would previously have had to have been performed at its core. Now on the one hand that means that this, that adversary approaches which, uh, are, which depend on disrupting the core of Western networks can be circumvented. However, these capabilities are inherently fallible in their own ways. They are vulnerable to bias. They are also vulnerable to poisoning, the conscious effort on the part of an adversary to feed incorrect data into a system to cause it to mislabel uh, so, uh, targets in a war time scenario. All of which means that human contextual judgment, and in particular, the ability to make accurate predictions about precisely when and where a capability should be used, uh, remain hugely important on future battlefields. So if deterrence fails, uh, the West may potentially be up against an adversary that can leverage uh, a lot of mass in the battlefield, not just because of their industrial capacity to do so, but also because potentially uh, the theatre of conflict is actually uh, much closer to them than it is to the West. And lastly, the optimization of tasks uh, will enable us to free up humans for the task um, that they are better suited for, but it will also enable us to keep humans away from risk and sort of delegate those risky tasks to machines, for example, bomb disposal or reconnaissance. Uh, there's a few challenges uh, that uh, will need to be circumvented with respect to uh, leveraging HMC and HMT. Uh, the first will be uh, developing clear and well-defined concepts of operations which determine the use cases upon which procurement in particular will be based. A second challenge will be uh, the challenge of procurement, particularly as the capabilities most relevant to HMC and HMT are increasingly drawn from the private sector. This is unlike previous uh, decades, you know, those of the Cold War, where the private sector was often a beneficiary of technology that was developed within the context of defense. But there are also risks, in particular the fact that many COTS capabilities are not really built to withstand adversary disruption. This represents a challenge that will be, need to be circumvented through adaptation. Uh, a final challenge will be uh, developing uh, operators uh, who are comfortable with the use of machines. A major impediment to the adoption of any technology is the initial discomfort that operators may have with a capability that they don't necessarily fully understand. It is critical that operators trust uh, the data that they, uh, that they receive from uh, the, the capabilities they're employing, but also equally that they are able to exercise the judgment to know when these capabilities may be behaving in a fallible way or indeed may be uh, systematically, may, may be being systematically disrupted by an adversary, potentially through things like data poisoning. Building the judgment within the force at the level of, at, at every echelon, uh, to, uh, to engage with uh, machine-based capabilities uh, will thus be a, a critical task for Western militaries going forward.